Welcome to F YouTube, Australia's hardest hitting consumer advocacy show. It's a consumer affair, the 824 report, six minutes. And first up tonight is Linda with an FU for BP. So recently I used my PayWave at a BP service station. I originally put $35 and one cent um, in. And when I got the receipt, the receipt said $35 and 30 cents. And they said, no, that's for using your card. And I said, but I haven't used credit. It's just a normal card. It's not a credit card. I said, well, it's PayWave and everybody's doing it. Linda thinks her local BP service station is being a bit slick. They charge a surcharge when she taps to pay, but she doesn't get charged when she swipes or inserts, even though the money comes from her savings account either way. So why am I charged more for tapping rather than swiping the exact same card? It's a good question, Linda. Card terminals are actually hooked up to two networks. Debit MasterCard and Visa debit cards can go through both. If you insert or swipe and press savings or check, you use the FPOS system. And if you tap or press credit, you use the Visa MasterCard system. Which means you can be charged a credit surcharge when you tap, even on a debit card. But who should we be angry at for that extra fee? Big oil or the big banks? That's like being asked to choose between your children who you hate equally. Stores don't have to add a surcharge, and it only happens in about 4% of card payments. So Linda, the petrol station, chose to slug you with the fee. Yeah! Boo, big oil! But under new Reserve Bank rules, surcharges can't be higher than what it costs the store to accept your card. So surcharges are usually just the stores passing on a charge that the bank charged them. So it's the banks that pocket the money. I still hate them both equally. Let's never fight again. I hate them both equally. But hang on, I've got costs too. It is true, a large chunk of your card surcharge is to cover what's called an interchange fee, which is set by Visa and MasterCard. Uh, I'm MasterCard. I'm Visa. We hate you both equally! So Linda, any of them could be responsible for your increased fee. It's like the world's most boring game of Cluedo. The Reserve Bank told us that the banks and the card schemes are allowed to set different fees depending on whether you insert or tap your card. We asked the banks if they charge different merchant service fees for tapping your card. Combank told us the fee depends on a number of factors, including the way the transaction is processed. But we should really be speaking to Visa and MasterCard. And they told us that the bank should only be charging the debit rate, and in any case, surcharging is entirely up to the merchant. So the merchants blame the banks, the banks blame the card schemes, and the card schemes blame the banks and the merchants. <sighs> then there's the store. Like we said, they don't have to add surcharges, but accepting card payments does cost them money. The problem at the moment is it's hard for stores to tell what the fees on different card types are. The good news is, as of today, like literally today, the 1st of June 2017, unless of course you're watching a repeat, the Reserve Bank is introducing new regulations that it hopes will bring more transparency. It wants to reduce the cost of surcharges by, wait for it, helping more businesses charge surcharges. This is more information than I wanted. Sorry, Linda, that's uh, in the fine print of the checkout. Now the Reserve Bank is taking a two-pronged approach. Like a lobster fork. Everyone can relate to that. The first prong is capping the interchange fee set by MasterCard and Visa. Oh, man! And banks now have to tell merchants exactly what the fees are for each type of card. Oh, man! The Reserve Bank hopes this will mean lower surcharges based on actual costs, instead of what most stores do now, which is spread the costs across everyone in the form of higher prices. If PayWave was a higher surcharge, I'd stop using it. Well, Linda, that's exactly what the Reserve Bank want you to think. They're inside my head. The RBA wants us to feel the true costs of more expensive forms of payment and choose the cheaper ones. It hopes this will promote competition between all the different forms of payment and encourage them to reduce their fees. So there you go, another happy F YouTube customer. I'm sorry I asked. Well, that is the alternate name of F YouTube. Here at the checkout, we're used to being panned by viewers but this is the first time they've sent in actual pans. A few eagle-eyed people noticed that their TFL frying pan contained some very strange fine print. 
By following these care instructions, you will prevent the emission of fumes, which can be dangerous for the birds. Nevertheless, it is recommended to keep the birds out of the kitchen. <gasps> <gasps> so long, chicken! This isn't a mistake either. It's also there in German. nicht in the sie Auf Wiedersehen, Hutschen! So, why is this warning here? Well, it turns out that Teflon and other cookware fumes can be toxic to birds. And this can occur if you leave an unfilled pan on a high heat. Even the company who make Teflon have this warning on their website. Bird owners should take steps to protect their pets, such as keeping their birds out of the kitchen. Hey, you know what they say, a bird near the pan is worth moving to another room. That really sucked. It's all right, it's all right, I got another one. Otherwise you might kill two birds with one pan. We, we hate, hate them both equally. One for the birds, I guess. Good night. <laughs>